Panasonic Lumix LX3. It's a hidden gem when it comes to digital camera compacts. But perhaps nowadays it's not such a secret any longer. I know it's the recent fad to find a cheap older Digicam and make a video about it. But I can at least say that it is a camera that I have loved for a long while. We go way back actually. Actually even to the time when it came out. And I got it around 2008 or 2009. So a video about this camera is something that I've been inclined to make for quite some time now. But for a long while it just wasn't possible. Until I by chance got my old LX3 back again. As you can see here from all the pictures rolling in the background, we were in Thailand at that time. And the reason that's significant is because all those pictures were taken on the LX3 back then. So here I was, enjoying life, traveling and happily shooting away with my LX3. As you can clearly see in this picture, for example. Me in the right stance, with no dig in the left whatsoever. That also happened to be the last time I was traveling together with my LX3. After some time traveling, let's say an odd 15 years later in life, I came across a silver version of the LX3 on a marketplace here in Sweden, and I jumped on the chance to get it. I was so excited, now I had a silver version of the LX3, a charger and a couple of batteries again. And I saw the opportunity to maybe get my old version, the black version of the LX3 back again, from my ex-wife. After some convincing, she was kind enough to give my black LX3 back again. And so to the moment of truth, would my LX3 work after all this time without any batteries in it? Time to find out. I just cannot explain the happiness I felt when I heard the noise of the lens popping out again. So the Panasonic Lumix LX3 was made back in 2008, as we had stated before. And it had a 10 megapixel CCD sensor under its hood. The lens that the LX3 is equipped with is a zoom lens and it goes from 24 to 60 mm in focal length. It has an aperture of 2.0 to 2.8, a variable aperture depending on what focal length you have zoomed out to. And believe it or not, it's labeled a Summicron lens from Leica. It has a convenient little button on top of the lens where you can actually change the aspect ratio of the picture. And it goes as follows, 4 by 3, 3x2 and 16x9. It has everything you need when it comes to manual settings as well. Aperture, priority, shutter priority, etc. You're able to customize your auto ISO options as well. And you can set the highest limit of the ISO, for example, and the lowest, and so forth. Speaking of the ISO, it goes from 80 to 6400. And I would say that the highest usable ISO number, for me at least, would be something like 1600. You also have some controls down here, where you can change the exposure compensation. And a little knob here, or a joystick, where you got your Q menu, where you can customize some settings that come in handy when you shoot. On the side of the lens you have a button where you can choose the manual settings or the AF settings but you can also choose a macro setting and I would say the macro setting is very very good or decent at least on this camera. I'm happy to say it uses SD cards. It has a hot shoe on top that you can put an external viewfinder for example or a small flash. And believe it or not this old camera has some image stabilization as well. I would deem it as decent though, nothing to write home about. 
And another very handy feature is of course the pop-up flash that you see here on the left side of the camera. It really comes in handy when you're in the dark sometimes. And last but not least, you have the option to choose RAW files with this camera as well. Although it has some really decent JPEGs as well, and I will get into some of the settings for that later on. So now I come to the point where I will share some of my experience and some pros and cons about this camera and some sort of conclusion. If it isn't obvious by now, I really really like the LX3 a lot. It's an old camera by now, I know that, but it has some very very nice qualities that I still enjoy and like about this camera. It is hard to describe the hype surrounding this camera at the time when it came out. And it was just one of those milestones when it comes to digital cameras around that age. And still is, I think, when you look back at it. One aspect making it even more popular, I think, was the cooperation between Leica and Panasonic at the time. Sort of a masterstroke uh, making that lens together with Panasonic. It helped create an enormous hype around the camera. And it was known as one of the best enthusiast camera around at that time and a few years ahead as well. One more important mention I gotta make is the successor to the LX3, the Panasonic LX5. That was the camera that I got after the LX3 and also brought to this trip in Thailand. So some of the pictures are also taken with the LX5. But they were very similar cameras and they only changed a few details, like the focal length and some other minor features as well. Otherwise the image quality and the character and everything was quite similar. I would still say though that the LX3 for me uh, hold a bit more uh, special of a place in my heart than the LX5 did. Uh, especially when it comes to how important it was for me when it came out as a milestone and so on. So what do I like about the LX3 after all this time and still like? Well first of all I would say it has to do with the lens and a special signature of this camera that I can see in the images when I take them. I really like the image quality from the LX3. In some way I would say also the sensor of course, the CCD sensor. I know everyone keeps saying that CCD sensors look more analog and so on. I would say that together with the lens uh, and that it doesn't look so perfect like some of the digital cameras of today, it tend to look more analog, I would say that as, as well. Speaking of image quality and character, uh, I also like the different picture settings or uh, film modes as they're called on the camera. And I especially like the uh, black and white modes, the dynamic and the smooth black and whites. Those are very, very nice to use. And they look tend to look a bit more analog as well. So those two uh, are my favorite black and white settings. A color setting I'm kind of fond of as well is the nostalgic setting. Gives a little bit nostalgic and uh, filmy look that I enjoy to use a lot as well. And another big thing that's a given with a compact camera is of course the portability and the ease of use of it to bring with you uh, everywhere you go. That's a big, big uh, pro for me as well. Another cool thing is the aspect ratio button, where you can choose the 4x3 and 16x9 and so on. Uh, I would say the favorite out of those are the 16x9, gives a bit of a cinematic look, but I haven't played around too much with the other uh, two aspect ratios. But it's a cool feature to have as well, I think. Next thing I want to mention would be the flash. While it doesn't look like much to begin with, uh, it sort of helps you in a lot of situations where you don't have enough light. And I think one other situation it suits very well to use is uh, in harsh sunlight, where you can remove the shadows from people's faces and so on. Uh, very handy to have in a lot of different situations. While it's not the best flash, it's uh, certainly useful sometimes. And so now to a few things I don't like with LX3. 
Uh, for starters, I would definitely mention the lens cover. Can be very, very annoying sometimes. And uh, you really need that little strap to not lose the lens cover as well. Uh, but it gets in the way a lot when you are shooting street, for example. And I wish they would have remedied that somehow. I know they, they do in later versions or literations of the Lumix cameras, but on this version it's, it's, it's very annoying at times. And also, in addition to that, uh, the next thing that annoys me a bit is the lens and how long it pops out. And it loses some of the compactness for sure when you do that. So, um, if you want to have the camera in your pocket, for example, you always have to have the uh, camera shut off. Uh, you can't have it with the lens out like that. So, and if you have it out, you can't have the lens cover on. So, yeah, that's a bit of a nuisance as well. Besides those small complaints that I just said, I don't really have any major complaints about this camera. Considering the age of the camera, uh, stuff like the ISO capabilities and so on, I don't really take into considerations now. I just like work around those shortcomings and uh, use it for what it's good for in this day and age itself. So just to sort of wrap up this section about the pros and cons, I would like to say that the LX3 sort of fits into the same category as the Leica Q did for me. And the similarities I see there between the two cameras is like the macro setting that you have on both cameras. You have the beautiful lens with a great character to match it. Uh, you have the manual controls that you can customize the camera to your liking. Uh, and the compactness of course and the ver versatility of the camera that gives you sort of the small little daily documentary tool for everything you do in life. So uh, in that regard, I see them uh, sort of the same kind of cameras to use. So that will actually conclude my little video about uh, Panasonic LX3. I really, really recommend this little camera. It's not that expensive, but it's getting more expensive every day now. So now I will end this video like I usually do, with some music and some of the images that I've taken with the camera I review. Uh, thank you for watching and please like and subscribe if you liked the video. Thank you, bye bye.